and were over the thousand pounds. One thousand and five pounds. If you can't do that, Ever the showman. He really is incredible. John Paul Sigmundson. John Paul Sigmundson. The strong man from Iceland, the Viking, the king of strength. You just saw him doing a 524 kilogram deadlift. But the question I'm asking today is what was the cause of John Paul's death? He was an entertainer, he was a crowd pleaser, he was extremely strong and extremely quick. But today I'm going to explore three avenues of explanations as to why Jan Paul Sigmundsson suffered an untimely heart attack at the age of 32 years young. Right, so the first thing I want to propose is well, first, first off, the official cause of death for Jan Paul Sigmundsson was a, um, a heart attack, cardiac arrest. So he, he suffered an aortic rupture whilst deadlifting in the gym, doing what he loved. So it has been noted by um, a tourism page on Iceland that Jan Paul had a congenital heart disease, which means that, or heart condition rather, he had a congenital heart condition, which means that he, there was a genetic, some sort of genetic defect um, with, with his heart. Now, whilst that is, I'm, I'm sure that is true, I want to explore three significant causal factors of his untimely death today. The first one I want to mention is steroids. John Paul Sigmundson was extremely strong as all open weight strongmen competing at an international level are. So the first question we have to ask is the first question we have to ask is are these strongmen natural lifters? Now obviously they're not. Obviously there's performance enhancing drugs involved. Everyone knows that. If, if, you, if you don't know that, then you're in for a shock. Obviously, um, to, to be lifting these kind of ridiculous weights, there's performance enhancing drugs involved. Now that does not mean that these athletes are um, cheaters. It's actually, there's nothing um, illegal about taking steroids and strongmen as far as I know. It's not tested and it may not be promoted, but it's certainly, it's certainly not tested for. So um, these athletes would be the strongest in the world regardless of whether they were taking steroids or not as well because obviously they have very good genetics and great qualities like determination and discipline which are really important when it comes to training. Okay so it's obvious these athletes are on steroids and that's obviously a factor but let's have a quick look at the academic literature just to show you anyone that thinks steroids may uh, not be so bad for your health. Let's just have a, look, a quick look at the uh, academic literature to see what the effect of steroids is on the heart before getting to our second cause. Okay, so a quick Google Scholar search will show you here that the systematic side effects of extradural steroids, for instance, are many, and there's another study here, for instance, serious cardiovascular side effects of large doses of steroids in anabolic weightlifters. Let's have a look at a couple more of them in depth. So, Pathological cardiovascular manifestations were reported in four male patients who took massive amounts of anabolic steroids while undergoing many years of strength uh, training, obviously intense strength training. One patient was referred because of ventricular fibrillation during exercise, while another because of clinically manifested heart failure. Another one had arterial thrombus in his lower leg, so obviously this is just 
one study, I'll put some more citations in the description box below, but it's quite clear to see, so it's quite clear to see that taking anabolic steroids worsens heart disease and increases mortality. So the second factor we're going to explore here is genetics. So it's likely that John Paul Sigmundson had congenital heart disease. As you can see, there's a range of things which this can mean, including right to left shunts or left to right shunts. And effectively, one in 100 babies, according to sources online, are born with congenital heart disease. So John Paul's not the only one affected. Which brings us towards the last cause we're going to causal factor we're going to explore, and that is the fact that there are genetic and environmental factors. So let's have a look at our last causal factor, and that is the environment. The last factor was the Yon Paul Sigmundson death diet. The reason I'm calling it this is because Yon Paul Sigmundson eats the same diet as many other strongmen. You can see him here eating his breakfast before Highland Games competition. He's having over a dozen eggs. That's a lot of dietary cholesterol and a lot of dietary um, saturated fat. And we know those two factors are highly correlated with heart disease. You can see here that he's also having many processed meats. Um, he's having some turkey or ham or some sort of processed meat here and obviously again this is a staple for strongmen in their diets not just at dinner and lunchtime but often for breakfast too. We know what this does to the heart and the endothelial and the endothelium lining and heart disease is the biggest killer in the world. So Jan Paul Sigmundsson is not the only one who's affected by this but for strongmen it is not uncommon to consume these vast quantities of heart disease causing foods. So we know processed animal products, particularly meat and dairy, cause heart disease. So what can we do about it? For instance, this study found that there was a need to reduce meat, particularly processed meat consumption when it came to cardiovascular disease. So, a strategy to arrest and reverse coronary artery disease. So, animal experiments and epidemiological studies have suggested that coronary disease could be prevented, arrested, or even reversed. So, how can strong men, or anyone, with or without a congenital heart, defect. Avoid heart disease. It's the biggest killer in the world. It's the number one killer in Australia, America and the United States. Congenital heart disease aside, let's hear what we can all do to prevent and reverse heart disease from Dr. Cadwell Esselstein. Because, look, <clears throat> no number has ever caused heart disease. Heart disease is caused by what is passing through your lips every day that is going to destroy the ability of your endothelial cells to make sufficient nitric oxide. The reason that I find that I'm perhaps uh, more passionate than ever about medicine is because I really feel that we are at the moment on the cusp of what I call a seismic revolution in health. And this seismic revolution in health is going to come about because, well, we've talked about heart disease today. Whole food plant-based nutrition not only gets rid of heart disease, it gets rid of hypertension, it gets rid of diabetes, it gets rid of <clears throat> high cholesterol, it gets rid of the risk of stroke, of vascular dementia, Crohn's disease, osteoporosis, and uh, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and multiple sclerosis, allergies, asthma, kidney disease. I mean, the list goes on. We have never before, never before have we had in medicine's toolbox a therapy that is so safe, so void of hideous side effects, so inexpensive. And it's up to us 
in the profession to find the will and the grit and the determination to share with patients the lifestyle and most specifically the nutritional literacy <clears throat> that will empower them as the, lo the locus of control to absolutely annihilate 80% of chronic illness. Thank you. So the real answer to this question of did Jan Paul's death diet ultimately cause him to die at such a young age is yes it was a contributing factor of course he had steroids of course there are genetic factors involved but the question here is is the strongman diet healthy and does it protect us against the biggest killers of people in the western world heart disease and cancer I'll leave some more information in the description box and I encourage all of you to watch What the Health on Netflix if you haven't already seen it. Let me know your thoughts, like, subscribe, share and tell me that Jan Paul Sigmundsson wasn't the best strongman in the history of the sport. What the Health and the Game Changers are two magnificent, insightful and revealing documentaries that I recommend. You can access both of them on Netflix.